I believe the author of Romans put it best when he said, all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. I don't care if you were born in Chen Z, China, Sao Paulo, Brazil, or Midland County. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Someone, somewhere, at some appointed time and hour, uh, had the wherewithal to share with you the good news of Christ. And the Spirit of God moved upon you. And you accepted the finished work that he did on Calvary. Listen to what the word of God says in Mark chapter 2 verses 13 through 17. It says, then he went out again by the sea and all the multitude came to him and he taught them. As he passed by, he saw Levi the son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax office, and he said to him, follow me. So he arose and followed him. Now it happened as he was dining in Levi's house that many tax collectors and sinners also sat together with Jesus and his disciples. For there were many, and they followed him. And when the scribes and Pharisees saw him eating with the tax collectors and sinners, they said to his disciples, how is it that he eats and drinks with tax collectors and sinners? I'm not going to be very long this morning, but I just stopped by to let you know that you can't have any impact unless you make contact. Do me a favor, if you will, turn to your neighbor and just tell them, you can't have any impact if you don't make contact. <laughs> Jesus had been teaching over in Capernaum and it, it says that he went out again by the sea. What happens here is Jesus oftentimes got away from the crowds and went into solitary places. You ever took a walk on the beach or by the ocean? How relaxing it is, Frank, out on that west coast. Frank often goes back home and uh, I don't know what comes over him, but he has the audacity to send me beautiful pictures <laughs> that he's taken by the Pacific Ocean. And as you see the ripples in the water and sometimes the white caps you know how relaxing that is i shared with you on last week that every now and then you've got to find a quiet place and so jesus would oftentimes retreat and he went by the sea a quiet place to be in contact with the father but as he was sitting there it said he saw Levi, which we know as Matthew. Levi was more than likely his given name and Matthew was the name that others gave him. You know, some of y'all don't even go by your real name. But he saw him and he called him and he gave him a directive. He said, follow me. And the word of God said, he arose and followed him without argument or debate. Now you have to understand the magnitude of this because this was no ordinary guy. Levi was a tax collector. He had a prestigious job in some people's eyes. Yet in the eyes of others, his job and he was considered by those of the Jews a sellout, a traitor, because the tax collectors worked for the Roman government. They would oftentimes collect the taxes to keep this big Roman machine going to provide uh, revenue uh, for the kingdom so that roads could be built, so that armies and navies and magistrates could be paid. And not only would they 
collect the taxes, but they would also raise the price to get a little extra for themselves. And so they would uh, exert some undue pressure on all of the people. And they lived like kings. At the expense of others. So much so that the Pharisees considered the tax collectors who were of Jewish origin to be sinners, to be out of the will of God. You know, those who are marginalized by society. We see it once a month when we walk into line our prison. We understand that those guys are marginalized by society. I'm no bleeding heart liberal. I know if, like Beretta said, if they do the crime, they ought to do the time. But there needs to be some mercy and compassion. I remember vividly uh, Dr. Harold Guthrie, who was the superintendent of uh, the Spring Branch School District there in the Houston area. He said one time, uh, as they were getting ready to go back to school, he said, you have an opportunity to influence how these kids will participate in society. He says, when you gather in that classroom, you need to uh, drop your biases, your prejudices, as the demographic of that district was changing. He says, you have an opportunity to influence how they'll participate in society. If you give them what they need, they'll go on to college and get a good education and get a good job and they'll be uh, very good outstanding citizens as they participate in society. If you ignore them and treat them like they're nothing, they'll meet you in the parking lot with a pistol and take your Lexus. But they will participate in society. And you have a reason, uh, uh, an opportunity rather to influence that. And so as we look at those guys in Lionel and Cofield and, and Hightower and, and Smith you know, and, and all over, we have an opportunity to influence how they will participate in society. Because they're coming out at some point. And I'd rather have a saved prisoner living by me Amen. than one who doesn't know God's mercies. And so he says to the tax collector, this sinner that everybody despised, follow me and without argument or debate, without any hesitancy, he packed it up and he followed Christ. Interesting thing was, here it is, the Messiah himself coming into contact with sinners. You would think that coming from the hallowed halls of heaven, being the majestic Messiah as he really was, that he would hang out with the aristocracy, with the big wigs in the church. But Jesus didn't find himself hanging out with them. You'll see later on in the passage that he came for a specific reason. For as he came to make impact, and in order to make impact, he had to have contact. So Levi followed him. I don't want to move too fast and uh, miss this to let you know so that you can extract from this that when God calls you, the time is right then. Follow him. And God doesn't stop calling us once we've been saved. He calls us to different duties at various times and seasons in our lives. And so when God makes the call, it's an imperative, it's incumbent upon all of us to do like Levi and follow him immediately. Levi had a lot to lose following Christ. But I've got good news for you. You may think you've got a lot to lose, but in reality, you've got everything to gain. And so they make their way to Levi's house. And the word says that many tax collectors and sinners were there. And here it is. The son of the living God is right in the midst of them. 
The Pharisees and Sadducees couldn't wrap their heads around that. And I know Jesus, like some of you, some people will see you and you're hanging out with uh, the less than the least. You're engaged in a conversation with those whose record is as long as your arm. Some of them are, uh, may not even be sober at the time that you're seen with them. And people automatically make a judgment. But if you hold the answer, why would you not be there with those who are less than the least? I'm afraid too many of us are, uh, have found our comfort zone. We're good to go when we gather here Sunday morning. And, and, and maybe perhaps we show up on Wednesday night. And the only people you'll find in our contact list are those who have been washed by the blood of the Lamb. Because we don't want to come into contact with that person that you walk by when you're going into Kent Quick, or that you pass up on the corner with a sign. Maybe if you just thought like the apostles after the resurrection, maybe if you just had a word to say to them that say it's silver and gold have I none, but such that I have. Maybe they really don't need a sandwich or two dollars. Maybe what they really need to hear is that Jesus loves them. Maybe what they need to hear is I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. I was very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, and from the waters he lifted me, now safe am I. And you too, brother, you too, sister, can share the joy of Jesus. Maybe God is waiting on you to make some contact. Don't raise your hands and uh, don't answer this question aloud, but again, in that narrow space, that six inch space between your ears. How many people have you contacted in the name of Jesus lately? If the answer to that is zero, it's okay. You can't undo what has already been done, but moving forward, starting today, you can start making contact with those who may not smell as good as you, who may not have had an opportunity to bathe in the last week or so, whose bank account is only as big as what's in their pocket. But you, me, just like Jesus, we have the opportunity to make an impact. If we're just willing to get off of our high horse and see the way God sees. Had to go to the doctor just, what is today, Sunday? It must have been Friday. And I was walking out of uh, the office and there was another older man there talking with me and uh, he says how are you today sir I said I am doing excellent I said my mother told me that if you get up and there's no chalk outline around your body you've got action Amen. and so I'm grateful to God for every moment that he gives me and he said wow somebody that won't complain I said, yeah, I'd be ungrateful to God if I started complaining. Don't be delusional. Everything isn't perfect. I'm not sitting here saying that all my I's are dotted and all my T's are crossed. I've still got a ways to go. But And when I look back over my life and I see how good God has been to me, I feel like uh, Pastor Jones used to say, I won't complain. And I just shared with him the goodness of Christ. 
And he said thank you as he walked away. You don't need a big opportunity. You don't need to stand before thousands and make the proclamation. It's the same guy that works next to you. The same lady that's over in the cubicle just away from yours. But you've got to start making contact if you're going to have an impact. The late Billy Graham once said this. He says, I preach to thousands and thousands and thousands in stadiums and arenas all over the world. He said, but if I had it to do all over again, I've come to the conclusion that my greatest impact has been when I'm one on one. You never know who God might be using you to save. Could be the next Billy Graham. Could be the next Dwight Moody. Could be the next Louis Palau. But you've got to make contact in order to have impact. And so Jesus was dining. The word says that he was reclining. He held a posture that says, uh, when you recline with someone in their home in that time and day when you were invited to someone's home it meant that they really cared about you and if you accepted the invitation it meant that you really cared about them and if you got into a reclining posture it says that you now have developed a connection that transcends the superficial I'm your friend connection. What Jesus was saying when he dined with these sinners, with these tax collectors, with these people who had been marginalized by society, he's saying, I care for you. I wonder this morning, in these hallowed halls, is there anyone willing not too proud not too shame to reach out to those who are lost you see them every day but if you don't talk to them if you don't make contact with them you'll never know I'm wondering Do we have some saints here that are uh, bold enough and fearless enough to be sensitive enough to the Holy Spirit and make contact? That's what Jesus did. He reclined at their table. He broke bread with them. What are we doing if we're not making contact? What are we all about if we're not uh, sharing the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ? A while back when Clayton was giving us an update on his health, he, he said one of the things he asked God was, I just want a little more time to take a few more with me. And he makes contact. I've seen him do it. Most of us are the recipients of him doing it. Ragamuffins, like ourselves. That he wasn't afraid of, regardless of where we'd been. And he made contact. And he's had impact. It doesn't have to be grandiose. You don't need to receive an Emmy for it. All you have to do is be obedient and make contact. Are you willing to dine at the table of sinners? Not everybody will be pleased when you make that decision. Because the Pharisees asked, they raised the question when they saw Jesus dining at the table of, 
uh, sinners and tax collectors. How is it that he eats and drinks with tax collectors and sinners? It amazes me how church people can get all dressed up on Sunday morning, send their Sunday best to come at cleaners, get it and put it on and walk in church like they ain't never done nothing wrong. Knowing full well if uh, the thoughts in their mind from the last two hours were run back on a big screen. Heaven help us all. Let me ask you if I could get Bruce to pull up on the screen everything you've been thinking in the last two hours. I know, I know. And so we've got no room to make judgment about others, but we've got a responsibility to reach out and extend the grace and the mercy of God to them. You'll see up there on the screen some research by Barna Barner concluded that 51% of people who profess a belief in Christ have no idea what the Great Commission is. And of that 51% or the 49% that know, only 17% can tell you where it's actually found in Scripture. The pie chart is up there just for you to peruse to let you see how serious this situation is. But we can change it right here, right now. Look what Jesus' response was to the question. How is it that he eats and drinks with tax collectors and sinners and says when Jesus heard it, he said to them, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to, repent, to repentance. Now, as you read the language here, you need to understand that Jesus was making a dig at them. You say, oh, I, I, I didn't come for the righteous, and you guys, obviously, you're righteous. You, you, you really have no need of, of a physician. You've got it all together. You see, it's something about sick people. Sick people who are really sick know that they are sick. And it's only sick people who know that they are sick know that they are in need of help. Dr. Darius Daniels puts it this way. He says, you can't fix what you won't face. If you don't know you're in a bad situation, you'll never make any efforts to get out of it. And so Christ comes and he says, I did not come to call you self-righteous people, but for those who are truly sick and know it. What you fail to understand is that you're no better than they are. As a matter of fact, uh, as the holders and keepers of the law, you're actually in worse condition. Because you, you may show up with a big old Bible, but you're not living what's in it. You may sound out with a great voice, how great is our God? But you don't really believe it. My time is just about up. 
But my challenge to you this morning is this. Don't leave here today without a commitment to start making contact. If you want to impact the kingdom of God, you're going to have to make contact. And if you just live the life that God has given you and called you to live, you don't have to search far and wide for opportunity. God will open your eyes and you'll see it right before you. That young girl who looks confused and in most cases really is. Some of you ladies who are seasoned have a word to give them. That guy who spends most of his money at a liquor store and is drunk half the time and they, they live two, two trailers down from us. You can make contact. And you can have an impact.